Hey, good morning options traders and welcome back everyone. Well, I received a really good email from one of our traders asking a really good question and actually quite complicated one. What is fixed strike volatility? And this really opens up a can of worms to a whole big conversation of different ways that we can handle volatility and the ways that we should understand how that volatility skew curve is going to change as the underlying stock price changes. So for right now, it's really just to get a basic definition of what it is and then maybe how you can use it. So let's just take a look at one of these ways to handle volatility, which is called a fixed strike volatility. So what this is talking about is skew. So I've talked about this before in previous videos. So recall that if we have different strikes along the horizontal, all for a given expiration, and we have the stock price, let's say historically, trading at 20%, that theoretically, we should see each of these strikes trading at the same volatility. Because after all, they are all tied to the same stock over the same expiration. It seems kind of odd that we would say that the 50 strike, for instance, should be trading at 20%, but the 45 strike should be trading at 25%. But yet that's what we see in the market. So remember that the Black-Scholes model assumes that we're going to see this, just a flat line. But in the real world, we don't see that. We might see that the 35 strike is trading way up here. The 40 is trading a little bit lower, 45 down here. The at-the-money option, if we assume that the stock is trading for 50, will trade very close to the historical or the current level of the volatility of the stock. There's an arbitrage opportunity if that's not true. So you'll usually see these line up right here. But then as we start going in this direction, let's say that these are out of the money calls, we'll start to see the skew pick up again. We'll see these volatilities start to change. So in this case, this is called a volatility smile. And we can get different degrees of them. Sometimes you'll hear it called a volatility smirk if it's more kind of a downward sloping like this. But part of what makes this whole topic difficult to answer and to really give a true answer is that first of all, nobody really knows where the skew comes from. It's there, it's persistent, it's become more pronounced since the crash of 87. But at a basic level, we know that it's either because the Black-Scholes model is imperfect or that the implied volatility is being incorrectly valued by the market. So we're not really sure where it comes from. Most people believe that, for instance, it's just about supply and demand. And so if we have a lot of people lining up the 45 strike, we have more buyers and sellers, that's going to push up the volatility. And so the blue curve will start sitting higher than the red. Maybe it lower strikes out this way, or maybe this is a put option that's out of the money. Then we might see a lot more demand for it. We might have a lot more buyers and sellers and push that implied volatility even higher. But this whole idea of a fixed strike volatility is again one of two ways of handling how we should view this as usually as the underlying changes. But one way to do it is to assume that the deltas stay the same. So let's say that our underlying stock moves from 50 to 45. Maybe we should assume that these numbers are going to stay the same. And the at the money in this instance right here at 50, if it moves to 45, that should become the new 20% volatility. And then one strike down would be where the 45 used to be and so on. We're just shifting that curve down. That's one way of handling the skew and making decisions and trading decisions. Sometimes this is called a delta-based volatility. But what we're talking about here is a fixed strike volatility. So let's say that this is our skew curve right here. And at the center, let's give it a volatility of maybe 30%. So if we have this skew curve, which a lot of your broker's platforms will show you. And so we would know up front that if the underlying falls to here, we're going to get this level of volatility. And if it falls down to here, we're going to get this level. We already know this, or at least we expect it just because this has been so persistent in the market. So this brings up a good question. If the underlying stock falls from at the money right here down to here, should we say that it has gone up because it's gone from 30 to 35%? Or should we say, 
No, we expected that. This isn't really an increase in volatility. It's just because we've moved down the skew curve. So again, it's really just a matter of perspective and how you want to interpret this. Because what we could do is say, if we're looking for a fixed strike volatility, what we would do is say, okay, if the stock moves down to here, I'm expecting it to be at 35%, but I'm not really going to say that that's an increase in volatility. Because again, that's what was expected. However, if the underlying moves to here and we see that the skew curve has done this, but because we've moved from 35 to up here, let's say that that's maybe 37. So that may be one way to say that the volatility has increased. Alternatively, what if we get out here, the underlying stock has moved to here, but we find that our skew curve has flattened out and it's not at 35 like we thought. Instead, it's fallen down here maybe to 33%. It's fallen from the expected level on the blue down to here in the red. And in this case, we would say, okay, now the volatility has fallen. But do you see the difference? I'm saying that the volatility has fallen because I expected it to be at 35 and it's at 33. But another view is to say that we've gone from 30 to 33 and it's therefore increased. So again, it just depends on your perspective, but from a strike based volatility perspective, I would say that at this strike, whatever it is, in my example, I was expecting it to be at 35. So if it falls to 35, I'm not going to say that that's an increase in volatility, only if it deviates up or down from this. So again, in this example, if it actually falls to 33, I would look at that as a decrease in volatility because it has dropped from the expected value of 35%. Okay, so what are some ways that you can use this? Well, obviously it could get really deep. There's a lot of different strategies we could employ depending on how we think that these skew curves are going to either flatten out or start to peak or what our interpretation is of these volatilities. But here's a very basic one. If we think that the volatility curve is going to go from blue to let's say red, flatten out, that's one strategy. Or maybe we think it's going to get sharper, like the first curve that we saw, maybe a little bit more like a V-shape. Well, if that's something that we want to play or at least have in our corner, we could look at butterfly spreads. So for instance, if we have a butterfly spread priced at a high volatility, the red curve is the current curve. But if volatility increases, look what happens. We flatten here in the center, the number has fallen from the red curve down here to the blue, but look what happens out here in the wings. Do you see how the blue curve now sits higher over here at the far left and the same idea over here on the far right? That's the effect of increasing volatility. We're expecting that skew curve to get more peaked. And if that's true, think about it. There's one of two ways we could do that. You're either pushing down in the center or you're pushing up on the wings. And so you would want to capitalize on both of those. You would want to be short the strikes in the center so that those volatilities when they fall will be a benefit to you. And you want to be long the wings so that if it does come true that these wings area here, the far left and right start to get boosted, that you will see that actually boost the value. So you're actually having a double effect here. You're getting a positive effect here on the wings and you're getting a positive effect in the center, at least from your perspective everything is going up. So this would be another way of either capitalizing on changes in the skew curves, or if let's say you were just trying to play relative pricing differences between these two vertical spreads, trying to play the fact that the stock is going to sit neutral, that's all fine, but let's put the skew curves in our corner as well. It's going to make a difference as to whether you think the curve is going to get more peaked or whether it's going to flatten. So that's a real basic example of how we might use the skew curve. And so I hope that helps to give you a little better understanding if you ever hear somebody talk about a fixed strike volatility. Again, all that means is that each strike is being evaluated based on the expectations of the strike, not from the strike where it came from. And if you have a better understanding of that, it can give you a much better edge when you are constructing your strategies. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. 
It's all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.